Lesson 12.1c, Finding Probability. So we talked about this in the last video, 12.1b, but let's go over it again to make sure everyone understands. An experiment, that would be flipping a coin 10 times to see how many times we get heads or tails. The trial would be each group of 10 coin flips. So we could do two trials, flip it 20 times, three trials, flip it 30 times. The outcome would be heads or it would be tails. That's what happens when we flip it. The event would be the outcome or set of outcomes. So if we flipped it 10 times, our set of outcomes would be all the heads or tails written down and transcribed as what happened. The probability would be from 0 to 1 or 0% to 100% describing the likelihood of an event, the likelihood of getting heads or getting tails. Because it's a coin flip and it's only got two sides, we have a 50% chance of getting heads and a 50% chance of getting tails. So here I have a new one for you, sample space. A sample space is the set of all possible outcomes for an experiment. So for the coin, it would be heads or it would be tails. We have two possible outcomes. A sample space can be small, such as the two outcomes when a coin is flipped. A sample space can be large, such as the possible number of dog owners in the state of Kentucky. Identifying the sample space can help us calculate the probability of an event. So as we learned before, if an event is not likely, it's unlikely to occur, the probability of the event is closer to zero, which would be impossible, there'd be no way it would happen. And if an event is likely to occur, then the event's probability is closer to one. It's closer to certainly happening. Now I introduced you to this P parentheses event close parentheses in the last video, it's the probability of an event and we can write it as P event. It would be the number of outcomes in the event over the number of all outcomes in the sample space. For a coin, we would have heads or tails, the probability of getting heads, well there's one heads and there's two sides of a coin, we'd have one half for the probability of getting heads. It's a one out of two chance. For rolling a number cube, a die, the probability of rolling a number less than three. So it can't be three, it's less than three. So that means it's either a two or a one. It's either one of these two, isn't it? There's only two numbers, one and two, but there's six numbers in all. So the probability of rolling a number less than three would be two, six. We can reduce it to one-third. So here we have a spinner and it's got eight sections, but three sections are red. We have the probability of the event, which is the number of outcomes in the event over the number of outcomes in the sample space. So for the probability of spinning and getting red would be the number of red sections. That's the number of outcomes in the event. The outcome would be red and the number of all the sections. That would be the number of outcomes in the sample space. So the sample space would be all of the sections. We have three red, there's eight sections. The probability of spinning and getting red is three eighths. On the number line, it would be about right here. It would be close to half. Three eighths is very close to four eighths, which is a half, isn't it? Now take a look at this spinner. There's only three sections. One section is red, one is blue, and one is yellow. What's the probability of spinning and it not being red? Well, the number of outcomes in the event is over the number of all outcomes in the sample space. So the number of outcomes in the event would be all the outcomes that would be not red. Well, that would be blue and yellow and the number of all the outcomes in the sample space is three, yellow, blue, and red. It would be two-thirds. On our number line, two-thirds would be about right here, and it would be very near likely, wouldn't it? It would be more than as likely or not. It's more than 50%. 
So let's finish the lesson with a little common sense. The probability of 5 on one number cube is the same as for two number cubes. The probability of rolling a 5 is the amount of 5s that are on the cube over the amount of all the numbers on the cube. There's one 5 on the cube. There's six numbers. In all, that would be 1 6th. If we had two cubes and rolled them, the, it would be the amount of fives on the cubes. Now there's one, two of them. And the amount of all the numbers on the cube would be six plus six. It would be 12. It would be two twelfths, which simplifies to one six. So the probability of five on one number cube is the same for two number cubes or three or four. It's still going to be a one six chance no matter how many six sided number cubes we use. We're finished with the third part. We're going to move on to the last part using the complement of an event. We have a lot of vocabulary words that might be new to you. If you can make some kind of notes with the coin flips as examples like I did here, it might help you remember them. It's really important for you to know them so that you can understand them and we can move forward. Have a wonderful day and join me for the next lesson. Bye.